welcome back. This is going to be uh, part three. Uh, we should wrap it up on this video. It's a pretty simple uh, conversion. So in this video, we're going to be mounting the uh, tailpipe and the engine. We're going to talk about the wheels and brakes, and then we're going to do a uh, overview of the whole thing. Um, let's talk about the pipe before I put it in. Um, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I've done, I've mounted these tabs on all my other video series before. I'm not going to do it again. I'll uh, insert a link uh, exactly where to find it. It's pretty simple. You just, um, hot, you know, draw a circle, draw a line right through the middle. Um, I hot glue that down. I bond these on with JB Weld, and then I uh, stick in four rivets and... Uh, all the other videos uh, call it out in detail, um, so we're not going to do that. Um, so this one here, well, we're ready to install the pipe. Um, once again, the the back end has to be off, and this part here has to be cut out because if you don't do that, you're going to be pulling the bell mouth, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. You don't want to do that. Um, okay, so. Um, I just popped um, two eighth inch holes in the thing and uh, I'm just going to set the pipe right like that. Um, we need to bond in the um, tailpipe ring. Um, I just painted it black because it looks better. So I just pretty much, I like the, uh, this little notch there is to clear the, uh, the rivet right here. Okay, so watch your orientation. So I got on mine, I like the uh, seam of the pipe at the top. I think it looks a little better. So you just pretty much center this up. And they fit really nice. The guy that I had laser cut these did a phenomenal job. Okay, so that's about that. Um, so I just uh, run a little bead of thin CA around there. all you need. Give it a quick kick. Okay, so now this is ready to go on. There we go. You gotta slide this in here like that. And you gotta fish it through the uh, tailpipe ring. There we go. Here we go. Here's the tailpipe one. So now the tail or the uh, aft fuselage can go on permanently. Okay, just like that. So I'm just gonna pop those two screws in real quick. And this thing kind of snaps on. Um, I have never unsnapped it. I imagine you can. You just gotta push in those tabs a little bit. But I really see no reason to unsnap it. Okay, so now what I do is side to side, I mean, it, everything fits like perfect, 
Okay, so I just line up the back end of the pipe with the end of the model, right like that. So it's positioned four and a half, it's positioned side to side. So you just draw two little hole or circles here. Got like a number 50 drill bit here. So I was busy this week. The uh, two guys that I'm doing these for, they wanted the uh, nose gear extension mod, and I'm not going to do a video of that because, you know, if you guys can't tolerate cutting the bottom of the fuselage out, you guys are going to lose your lunch when I do that one. So I'm not going to show it. But I personally, I think the model looks stupid sitting at the angle of the tack on the ground that free wing has it, but that's my opinion. Okay, so the back, back's pretty much done. You know, we got perfect alignment here. The pipe is positioned, not going anywhere. Once again, no heat shielding is required. Don't, don't be lining the whole thing with tape and you're wasting your time and you're just adding weight. All right, so now we can position the engine. Uh, this guy's going with the X45. So what I do, I just project a straight line and I want to cut those screws in half basically that are mounting the um, engine to the tail cone, okay? So just right like that. Easy peasy. So, um... Just circle these holes. You know, the engine's located. So if you look up the back end of it, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on video. I'll hold it up to the light. I mean, the engine is like perfectly centered in the, uh, the middle of the tailpipe. So I'm not gonna drill the holes and all that. You guys can try to do that. So, you know, the hole's got good edge distance. I mean, what more do you want? And then once again, this slot here is to run the um, fuel line and three wire connector up. So once you got the engine and everything located, um, we can put this piece back. I'm set up here, ready to put it back on this model. Uh, you do got to cut off about an eighth inch. There's little tabs sticking off of here. You gotta cut them off to uh, allow clearance for the wood and everything. So um, I just got this screwed to this, so this part will become part of the model again, and the hatch will be removable. So I'm just gonna Gorilla glue that down. Drop it straight down. Once again, that draft that we cut on this, this really plays to your advantage right now. Right like that. Walk away. Okay, so uh, I'll just show you the nose gear mod. Um, so basically what it does is, let me grab a pointer. I've added this, this piece of aluminum here. It's five eighths of an inch long. It goes from here to here. This part of the gear right there used to touch 
the steering arm. So in order to do that, you got to uh, move the gear aft because if you don't do that, the uh, tire um, runs into your uh, linkage there. So it's a process. It, it takes way longer than I thought it would. Uh, this is the fourth one I've done. I got it down to a science, but you don't want to go there. It's, it's a pain in the butt. If, if, if you want to really see it, even I, if I get a bunch of comments to show it, I might do it, but right now I'm not planning on it. Um, but, you know, I've slammed it down a few times and it seems to be holding up. Okay, so um, let's talk about the wheels and brakes. And then one of the thing that Nose Gear Mod does get like a, a reinforcement plate up here because there's two G10 rails coming through that uh, basically the uh, gear is mounted to now. So if you ever do, if you do do the nose gear mount and you rip, do a really hard landing and rip this mount out, I don't know what to tell you. So far it seems to be holding up. All right, so let's talk about the wheels and brakes. Um, I'm using these uh, things, they're called LDTs and uh, I got mixed feelings about it. Um, I think they've done a, a mod to them where they've fixed some of the magnet problems and uh, they seem to work okay now. Um, but what I do is I mill out a slot here and then I gotta take the axle and I grind it back a little bit or turn it on a lathe and I put on a new flat spot. And uh, they fit in there real nice. And the reason I do that is because if you don't do that, see, I'm gaining about 140 thousandths right there. That's my step. If you don't do that, the wheel's going to be right up against the door, and chances are it's going to rub. I'm not saying you have to do this. It may work, um, but it, it spaces it out just right so that when the tire goes up, it hits the mechanism that shuts the inner doors, and... Uh, on the prototype, it's been working fine. So, um, you know, that that's how you do it. You know, JPs would work too. Um, you know, these these seem like nice units and uh, I've been having okay luck with them. All right, let's, um, so this is wrapping up. We're gonna talk, uh, just to do a general overview. Um, oh, and one thing I did do a last uh, video, I was talking about putting the wires through. I, one thing I did forget was I did the uh, gear, ailerons, flaps, and the lights. I forgot the brake line, so uh, I added a brake line last night, and uh, it wasn't that hard. I was able to, like, fish an inner nye rod up through there, and then I taped the wire on, and it, it fed right through. All right, so, you know, it wasn't the end of the world. So um, we're going to do a general overview. Um, this thing does have the blue box in it, but I'm just running the blue box for the gear and the uh, the nose gear doors. Um, it, it's standing up right. I don't know if it's hard, it might be hard to see it, but it's standing up right under or underneath the uh, receiver. And if you plug the gear doors into that and the uh, three gear wires, and then plug that directly into the receiver, it takes care of all the sequencing and all that that you don't have to mess around with in your radio. Um, so well, let's talk about the receiver shelf here real quick. So I supply this too and uh, once again it, it fits really nice. So it just kind of rests right um, underneath this lip right here. Okay so right like that. Put it in there it's nice and level i like to leave a little bit of room here you know don't shove it back all the way leave a little bit of room and you can run all these wires up through this spot right here and it just neatens up your installation and then i uh, i just screw, uh, glue a little bit of scrap plywood underneath it so it's sandwiched in there and there's no way it can go anywhere so uh, once again you the blue box is fine just for the gear but all the other flight controls, they're going directly to the receiver. Um, two ounce map UAT. I got it cut into the uh, 
the bottom piece of plywood a little bit and it just gives a little bit more room so these lines here aren't interfering with the hatch. This is like one of the first conversions I've ever done where you don't have to do a lot of carving on the hatch to get it to fit. Uh, but keep the UAT low. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's as straightforward of a conversion as you're going to get. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but, you know, I'm not going to talk every, you know, if you want to watch my other videos, you can, but, you know, the plumbing's really straightforward. The line going from the clunk on the tank feeds into the top of the UAT. The other line is just for fill. The front line goes to the pump, and then from the pump, I go from the uh, shutoff to the filter right to the engine. I mean, it's super, super simple. Um, just try to be neat with it. I got my, I got an AG63 um, brake controller down there. Uh, these things do come with a, um, uh, their, their little LDT controller. It's right here. And they're, they're kind of neat where uh, it starts off as pulsing like anti-lock for about a second or two, and then it, it goes into the full braking mode. So they're, they're, they're kind of different. They, they work okay. Um, other than that, you know, three batteries up front. The model will need ballast, I guarantee you. Um, so I just burnt in some wire or some uh, holes that go probably an inch and a half deep and uh, inserted some lead, just play around with it until... Uh, you know, it's right. Once again, I think the uh, stock CG is a little bit forward. I like it. Oh, about 5 16th, quarter to 5 16th half. So um, that's going to wrap up this uh, build series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you picked up a few tricks or techniques. All right, thanks for watching.